Let's start off with you, Rook. What is your first pick of the night? All right. Uh, I picked out, I think Tom suggested this last week uh, that I should check yeah. out. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? And what did you think? I thought it was pretty darn good, actually. Good. Uh, <laughs> with it. Nice. Uh, it's funny. So I so that Tons. night I actually was checking out to see where I could get it. And uh, the Blu-ray price was like $14. The DVD was $9. This is a Blu-ray plus DVD. And it was like six bucks extra tax and they got it like within less than 12 hours like i was like dude that was the fastest ever it came with both the blu-ray and the dvd and it was cheaper than either the blu-ray or the dvd and i don't understand how that works but whatever i'm not gonna complain with it i got it for cheap and i gotta see it and i liked it so that's a big bonus there i, I love i love the feel that it has there being like taking place in that time period the 1940s and uh just like the character eddie uh Who's the guy that plays him? Uh, Bob Hoskins. Hoskins. Yeah, I, I like I like his I like his uh, personality with it. You know, he's like it, I like the type of character. It's like you got the cartoons and you got that setting paired with he just lost his brother to a cartoon, which in a way sounds like an odd premise to start. Like a, a cartoon killed your brother. I don't know if that's supposed to be some type of commentary on cartoons it was at the tune. time. Cartoon, <laughs> yeah, tunes. Well, tune. replace tune but, uh, with. Okay, right. Oh. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that makes that makes more sense. <laughs> Which <is fine>. <laughs> that's <laughs> but, wrong. But, um, but, uh, there's yeah, a lot of uh, yeah. It, it was also a nice surprise to see Christopher Lloyd in there. I love Christopher. Oh Lloyd. yeah, he's uh, great in that one. And I was like, oh shit, he's uh, he's like the villain in this sort of. Yep. Okay, sweet. All right, and These you know they it, good it, gloves, just, Mister Valiant. The concept of like you can't really kill tunes because nothing that you could blow them up. You put heavy things on them; they don't die. And then no, you dip. create the <laughs> dip exactly, and it's like oh shit. And then he just randomly kills a nice little well, not randomly. I mean, he's investigating the thing, sees a tune thing that was near him, and picks it up and murders a little motherfucker and just, and just murders <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, just, 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 just kills it. I was just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, I didn't really like. That's kind of how that. you're supposed to see it. Is that tunes are seen as lesser than citizens, basically? Exactly. I got the I got the message. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <exactly. yeah. laughs> and I was like, oh man, okay. And uh, I, it was just interesting seeing them do that. And Fancine said it came out like you said, eighty-eight, eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Yep. And yeah, the, yeah, the way that the effects are with it are really impressive because it's a lot of modern day things that would try to do the same thing. I think and look worse. But then I'm also trying to think. So, how old was Song of the South? Um, that was was that was that the first one that did a cartoon live action integration, or is there other things before? That? I'm trying to think about what was the no. First actually, that's that something that has it. happened uh, many times in the past. In fact, it goes way back to some of the original animated features. But uh, as far as like it, it it happens every once in a while. There hasn't been many movies like you had Song of the South, Mary Poppins, as far as actual movie movies. Oh, Mary Poppins, um, too. That's another one. I didn't think about that one. And it's funny yeah. that you brought this movie onto this week because the one I'm going to talk about next is one of them, and I'm going to leave that out for now. Okay. Um, and then you had Pete's Dragon um, and a few oh, others. Oh, okay. That you're, you're, to do you're already like can stop it. You're, you're already listing a bunch of them now, and I'm actually it's yeah. jogging my but memory. The it. difference is, is this movie had the most extensive <laughs> animation well, in a completely yeah. different way than they'd ever done it before. Like that's, there's more animation in this movie than ever had been combined with a movie well, before. That's, that's what I was going to kind of comment on is that the way that the animation integrates with the live, with the people and stuff feels more fitting compared to those ones. At least when I can remember of Mary Poppins and stuff, it looked more like, yeah, they're around, but how aware are they of these things compared to this is like, you know, they do something and it like interacts with them right away. It, it just really feels like they're kind of there. You know, it's a cartoon. You know that it's a tune and whatnot, and yeah. what you, what, I'm trying to imagine back then what they're told to do for doing their scenes because nowadays we have green screen tennis ball stuff. I'm trying to think about that process that they had for back then. It does come with a lot of bonus features that I think will probably be worth checking out. Yes, it will because this not, movie took almost. It, but I want to do that. It took like that. five years to make, and I shit you not. Like yeah. Zemeckis was working on it for like three years. This is why there was five years between Back to the Future and Back to the Future Two. Because oh, he's working on this. This between? that's the only movie he made in between. Yeah, because he was working, and that movie took so long to make. They shot it for almost like a year, and then just to do all the animation took a couple of years. They had like a year or two on the other end of that with pre-production, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to do it. 
Um, there's actually a bunch of animation tests out there. Uh, Paul Rubens almost did the voice of Roger Rabbit for a while. I don't know if you know the name, but you know who he played. I, I recognize the name, but Kiwi I, Herman, yeah. Kiwi Herman, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like uh, they I'm had. They didn't, I'm glad they didn't go with the voice, but they've been work, know, they've been working they've been working on it for but, a few years. Yeah. And initially, the idea is it's way different than the book. Okay, the original book takes place in the '80s. It's a modern day book, um, and instead of cartoon characters, it's comic book characters. Oh, that makes so sense. like you have like Blondie and Dagwood and all those well, kind of so guys. What year was the book from? Like 80, 81, 82, somewhere in there. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, um, okay. I think it was like 80 or 81. And then the rights were bought in 82 by Disney. And then they had worked on it since then to try and get it off the ground. Um, and it wasn't until Zemeckis came in in about 85, 86 when they finally kind of made some headway with it. And uh, yeah, it was a big gamble for Disney at that time because they were on the cusp of bank, like not bankruptcy, but they were on the cusp of selling a bunch of shit off. And, uh, they hadn't had an animated hit in almost a decade. The only hits well, they had had that, were like point, Splash around, and a few other things like that, like that Three point, Men and a been Baby. Yeah, for like sixty years, right? They've been around. For yeah, and they had not been able to figure out how to get back into family films like Tron and stuff like that had failed for them. And well, if they weren't they didn't in family, have anything. What, what else were they in? I guess. They had Touchstone, and Touchstone was the only thing making them any money at that point. Yeah, like Splash <laughs> and Three Men and a Baby and stuff oh, like sorry, that. I, I rephrase. I mean, what? So, like, if the cart tunes weren't do, weren't doing well with families for a nope. while you mean or nope yeah. don yeah. bluth took over the 80s from disney he actually used to work with disney and then oh. they fucked him over so he left and he went and worked on a bunch of movies that were like in the 80s all the animated films that were big was stuff like land before time american mm-hmm. tale I'm thinking, of um, that. I'm thinking of the other one with the with the other dinosaurs uh, uh, that can sing or whatever um was that we're too? back yeah, we're back. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think he might have had something yeah. to do with that one. And then you also had, um, what was the other one he did in the 80s? Uh, 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 all Dogs Go to Heaven, I think he also had something to oh, do yeah. with. Okay. So all yeah, those seen, movies all these ones too. Yeah, were okay. way bigger than any of the Disney films of the 80s. It wasn't until The Little Mermaid, a year after Ra- Roger Rabbit, is when they had their comeback with animation. Because in the 80s, they had Fox and the Hound. They had... Um, uh, with the Great Mouse Detective and and Black right. Cauldron, which cost them a shit ton of money. Yeah. Right. Um, and that failed miserably. And they tried to release it twice, and it still failed. Um, yeah, because they released it in '85, it failed. They recut it again, changed the name, and tried to release it in like 1990, and yeah. it failed miserably then too. Um, That's crazy because I grew up with a lot of those movies that are older too. I remember Oliver and Company was the closest and, thing uh, they had to a hit, and that was. And Roger Rabbit was in between Oliver and Company and Little Mermaid. And, so, and but Roger was like the good, okay, we've got somewhat of a step. And then the mermaid was like, oh, Roger right, Rabbit was a huge hit. Boom. Like, yeah, you got to understand, big. Roger Rabbit was a hit on the level of like Batman, Superman, Star Wars, like that kind of thing. That movie grossed like $400 million in 88, I think it was, or more. Let me look here. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine how the audience would have received this type of film at that time because it's oh, it like, ran for a whole year, dude. Yeah. It was. Well, I mean, huge. I'm trying it's, to think. Cause they're good. Good. It's something like when you see it for the first time, and you see like Donald Duck and Daffy Duck and Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny and all these characters in this world and Jessica Rabbit and how it's how it's played. Like the Cryo mentioned in the thing, it's it's played where it's very serious. This is a world where tunes exist, and it's played very serious, and it works. And it's Actually, something. Go ahead. It was in theaters for a year and a half. <laughs> nice. Didn't come out until Christmas of 89, the same time as Batman. Wow. <laughs> nice. Damn. But no, like, it seems like, uh, so hold on, it, it, are Bugs and Daffy Duck, are, they're from a different company though, right? They're the Warner, Brothers. Warner Brothers. Yeah. This was the so power was this, of was, Steven Spielberg. This, a, was this, a this Disney... is a once in a lifetime thing. That's why, that's why I was wondering while I was watching, I was like, have they ever teamed up before? Like, the closest I, I we've come since then was the Rescue Rangers thing. They actually allowed them to have some characters. I couldn't believe it. Because wow. normally, yeah, the only reason this happened the way it did was because Steven Spielberg made it happen. Mm-hmm. Was he just like a god at, at the time? Yes. Because like, mm-hmm. wasn't he what made like George Lucas be able to do Star Wars and stuff? Like, no, not Star I think Wars. Was, but I think it's somebody else. Indiana that. Jones. No, Spielberg was one of those that after like E.T., like everything he did was gold. 
Like there was nothing he could touch. Well, right, well I mean, like, like his word, even like to yeah, like, just no, him being I, attached I, to like, a like, project. Yeah, like George, he's cool. I like this thing. So that then that thing gets support or this thing, and like th- is that that sounds like how he's <laughs> treated was like they'll take it. Well, this is why we say Kathleen cool. Kennedy had the easiest job in Hollywood. Like being the producer for Steven Spielberg is literally got to be the easiest job ever, because it you, everybody says yes. Because yeah. it's Steven Spielberg. <laughs> exactly. Right? They're like, oh, can we get the uh, Brooklyn Bridge shut down for a day? Who is this? Uh, I, I'm the producer for, you know, uh, uh, Joe Schmo Nobody. No, fuck you. <laughs> oh, who is this? Oh, this is Kathleen Kennedy. I'm the producer for Steven Spielberg. Well, right away, Miss Kennedy. We'll get that done right away. Yeah. Right? Because it's for Steven Spielberg, <laughs> right? right? right. That, uh, yeah, yeah. Doors open easily for somebody like that. Okay, that makes sense. He wrote the coattails of greater men. Yes, <laughs> that's that's true. That's true yeah. to the matter. <laughs> well, and that's true because if she's not producing a movie that's directed by Robert Zemeckis or Steven Spielberg or somebody like that, she's making shit like Milk Money. Oh, yeah, right. I hated Milk Money. Oh, I hated yeah. that movie. Wait, so, uh, question: So, uh, was Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit were they invented for this film, or were they also technically they're from characters? the book? Okay, but they're, I mean, they, like they weren't other animated stuff prior I mean, no uh, no this was their first okay. thing like they're from the book their original characters um yeah all the so characters I mean, except for the disney characters that pre-existed in the warner characters and the uh harvey tunes and the ones that show up in the movie that's the other thing they got other companies too they, they got the mgm and all the other was, animated ones in there too sure, yeah. like if it was like I, for some reason i thought it was like a non-disney company that made this and they were able to get warner brothers and they made it disney under the there. touchstone banner but it is disney okay Okay, that makes sense. Because there's a line in the movie too where they said, you know, oh, you got something. Uh, and they, I don't know if they mentioned Disney, but they mentioned something. It's like, oh, you, oh, yeah. you were able to get them or something. And I, I thought that was like a, a me- I guess I'm used to meta lines and things that I thought. That's oh, you're probably of thinking of the Dumbo but, line. Yeah, with Dumbo. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, is it's that like, with them going, oh, we were able to get the Disney stuff. You're a little jumpy, movie. aren't you, Valiant? Wow. <laughs> it's just <laughs> Dumbo. <laughs> I got him on loan from right. Disney. Yeah, that line. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's him and the whole like cast of Fantasia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the way that they portray the the tunes in the movie is essentially that they're not created by a person. They are people that exist that are way different. They're indentured than servants. In their it's funny because yeah. that line yeah. tells you that. Like they're on loan from Disney, right? Yeah. Which like means they're, they're slaves. They're owned. They're, they, they are, are owned by somebody. Yeah. 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 That, that was so, the impression yeah. I was getting. And so that's why I want to talk to you guys about this. I saw it literally last week after I bought it. I watched it and I was like, oh, man, I want to talk about this. Well, that's so, why uh, Roger goes to Eddie. Cause he's like, you know, I ain't got no rights. And then now they got judge dread or judge doom. I mean, not judge dread. He's back, right. practically judge dread, uh, judge yeah. doom. Who's in a totally different kind of scenario than they're used to. If you listen to the lines of the movie, there's a lot of exposition throughout the film. Like to- Toontown was run by, you know, originally by the guy who gets killed. The guy that you meet in the Inca Pay Club, the fat guy who's gets yeah, caught yeah. playing patty cake with Jessica, which right, patty the cake patty, is yeah. the went to sex for for tunes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> patty cake. Patty cake. Patty cake. <laughs> Come on, now, calm down. You're not the first guy whose wife played patty cake. On. <laughs> if you were to tell me that, I wouldn't think that's funny. But seeing it play out, that was pretty funny. I was like, oh, that's. That was funny as shit. What's funnier is when he's like going through the pictures and he starts making them go fast enough that they're actually animated. Yeah, that they're just, <laughs> just like, oh no. So anyway, so then he kills the mayor and also he became a judge. Yeah. Uh, by buying up the election. And then yeah. you find out, of course, that's the same guy that killed Eddie, and the, the money he got was the, the 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 bank that he stole money from that he that he robbed, which Eddie and his brother were going after him. Yeah. And that whole thing. So it's like, it all ties together nicely. I, li- I like that. I was surprised that it tied together like that. And it, it didn't yeah. feel like convoluted or something. And I was like, this kind of had some meaning. Well, to what's it. funny is how they use reality there because the area that they use for Toontown literally did was just used to be like nothing. And then they turned it into the freeway. So like, just the idea is, okay, well, before it was nothing. It, well, technically in this world, it was Toontown, right? Is right. where all the tunes lived. But yeah, so. Right. See, it I, still I eventually happens, be, but yeah. I didn't know if there's supposed to, that's <laughs> yeah. why I want to talk to you guys if there's more commentary or things that they did in the film that I might not be aware of. Like them doing that is like, you know, their implication is that once they do the, the highway in there, the freeway, whatever, that that will be, you know, the tunes won't be seen in the same way as they used to be. They're going to be lessened even more or something. They'll be, be homeless. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, but then, in, I mean, for our world, too, like in our real time, because you said that people, that they weren't getting many hits with their cartoon stuff, right? With Disney at the time. No, no, yeah. So that's kind of well, what I was I mean, saying. It's like, I don't know if they were trying to have anything like that. Like, you know, people aren't, you know, without it being overt. I mean, that's what I kind of like about it. No, like, the tunes were kind of more of an allegory, more for a, just like the way minorities were treated back in the day and just actors in general. Yeah, I was going to say, it seemed like more of a worker thing. Yeah, because actors were treated like a slave, essentially. You're like contracted to a studio and you weren't able to leave and do anything. Like, you know, it was, you know, and like I was telling you, I think last week or the week before, like movies back then weren't like they are now where you worked for the studio. Like you came in every morning at like eight o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. whatever it was you did that day, you did it. And then you worked for 12, 16 hours and you clocked out for the day and you were done. You know, like that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you were working on that day was whatever you were working on that day. You didn't get to pick. Like very few stars got to pick what they got to do. And that was just when you got to that point where you were so big, like a John Wayne or, a, you know, right. somebody like Clark Gable or somebody like that. Yeah. Wow. You know, this yeah. is so funny, especially considering my first pick of the night. Was, it's going to relate to some of this stuff altogether. It's it's a blurred <laughs> line, Sean. It is more like their ownership, like the studios own them. Right. That's the thing. It is kind of a, a fine line. And I have a really great interview with the guy who wrote the book eventually coming out on midnight's edge, if I ever get it edited. Um, so yeah, I've talked to him about it and I hate, I don't say it. I didn't say it to him, but I'll say it here. This is one of those movies where the, the book book is not as good as the movie The movie is a lot better than the book. The book is a completely different animal. Um, in the book, as I was saying, they're comic book characters or comic strip characters actually. Um, and they don't actually speak. When they talk, they have little word bubbles that come up over their heads. And they were going to try and do that in the movie, but I guess it was just too logistic of a nightmare. And that'd that'd probably be that. for, for the medium as well. And probably and at the time. Exactly. Know, yeah. like, is that really what people would see? You know, I can see. So that like if they up. go Yelp, it would actually come up with a Yelp. Yeah. And then right. it would just kind of fade away or whatever. Cause that right. actually plays into it all. And what happens is, is in the book, Roger's dead. He creates a doppelganger. Oh, no. um, and what you can do is, as a tune, you can create a doppelganger for stunts. Um, and so he creates a doppelganger, and his doppelganger lives, but he gets killed. So his doppelganger is actually going with Eddie or trying to figure out who killed him. That's what the real story, the original book's about. Then you find out his wife and all this other shit's wrapped up in this weird kind of like... It, it's not. It's It's a little bit more like just not as eventful as the movie is right and there's some little cameos from like you know they mentioned uh, comic strip characters and stuff like that but never anything really kind of like the way they do in who framed roger rabbit like baby herman's an original story from the book jessica rabbit's an original story from the book Mm -hmm. i believe rk maroon and stuff like that are all in the book but they're all in kind of different capacities even jessica's kind of a different character in the book too she's kind of a bitch in some ways but <laughs> well i was about to add that they kind of adjust her character's kind of adjusted though she's kind of weird her her they kind of emulate that in the movie with her kind of logic like her logic is you know she knocks roger out throws him in the <laughs> truck of the right. car so he, he doesn't her. get hurt he doesn't get hurt yeah that's yeah. the kind of logic jessica has like she's well, I mean, very in a way, I mean, if, yeah. he's, if he's if he's awake and conscious he can think about something and overreact or whatever so it's or get scared and if he's knocked out yeah, nothing to worry about yeah, so <laughs> it makes no sense. But I was going to ask you guys what what the response to her was like back then because I can oh easily boy. see I can <laughs> easily see right um, now people. Dr- have you ever heard of Rule Thirty Four on the internet? <laughs> was, Let's just say, put I it get, this way: uh, currently trying to cancel her now. Actually, it probably has it right then. on the cover there. Look at the cover. Let me see. I'm trying to remember if, um, how accurate the cover is. I'm sure. It's, yeah, they definitely do it already in that cover. Every picture of her, besides in the movie, she has her b- breast reduced by two thirds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What they, would that, that tell? What the, but this was after. This is before or after ratings, or like for the movies. That yeah, was the, that was a big deal. People made a big fucking deal about her bosoms, <laughs> like a big deal about it. And like I said, in all the marketing things and everything like that, if it wasn't actual clips from the movie, her boobs were massively reduced. Like in the coloring books, in the in the you know 
all that stuff. Like anything you ever saw with Roger Rabbit and Jessica on it, her boobs were well, much obviously smaller. Obviously more of a classy lady, of course. <laughs> I mean, they've edited it. She, there's a scene where her legs are, when she's falling down the hill, okay. they've edited it. And... That's different. They don't show her boobs. What 4K Cinema HD is talking about is there's one little shot, and actually it's one little frame, mm. um, that the animators didn't give Jessica any underwear. Mm -hmm. And when she flies off of, out of, I should say, uh, Benny the cab after he hits the, the pedal of dip, mm -hmm. she spins around in the air. You can see up her dress. Mm -hmm. Well, they fixed it in future releases, but of course, in the original yeah. laser disc release, you can still see, you could barely see. It's just, yeah, it's not like it's, it's nothing worth writing home about. People it's, seem yeah. to always freak out about Disney with that stuff. It's kind of funny. Like, uh, wasn't there one in like the rescuers or one of those? One of the mouse that one's a little bit more blatant. What that was and, was <laughs> actual yeah, the thing, animators. The thing that people would like, what are the odds people would pause like on the thing? That was kind of it. At that point thing. when they did it, they knew there was no way anybody was going to, or at least at that point, they thought nobody, anybody was going to find this shit. So they had like the rescuers were like flying through the air for something and the windows in yeah. the background had like yeah. lights on and like images and pictures and stuff in them. And yeah. it started out, I think, innocently enough where I think they just put some pictures of friends and family. And then all of a sudden by like, you know, <laughs> one section, midnight, at one o'clock in the morning when everybody's had a few too many drinks and a few too many mm -hmm. joints, it started yeah. turning into clippings from Playboy. Right. So, by <laughs> 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 so if you looked in the windows of the old uh, rescuers, yeah, there was yeah. pictures well, of scantily clad to naked women. In front of yeah. the windows, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which that's just that's just funny. I don't know. And then like in Lion King, I know they had like the sex dust or something. That one I'm not so sure yeah. on. Same thing with the Little Mermaid cover because I yeah. almost believe the guy's story on that. Yeah, half ass, but yeah, but it's just funny. Yeah. Like what people will get a stink of is what I'm kind of getting at. So with Jessica Rabbit, I imagine people did people back then voice concern before the release knowing that she's going to be in it at all or oh yeah when but. people saw what she was in the trailers and stuff it was a big i mean i remember my mom making a big stink about it yeah like, really, what was the kind of thing said about it like like she it's just excessive it's too much <laughs> like i'm trying to imagine it's, the why does her boobs have to be so Jeez. big she wasn't born bad. She's just drawn that way. Like once you say? saw the movie, like line. once <laughs> you got to understand once people saw the movie, it wasn't as bad, but like, I mean, there were still yeah. some people who were like, wow, for a kid's movie, that's just a little too much. And yeah. It's, you know? yeah but it's like, it's just a personified, you know, oh, you know, the eyes pop well, out. She's based on, the, yeah, she's exactly. She's like, based on the what old, that uh, reaction is for, you know, like um, that kind what's of, his oh, face what's cartoons. That? I just forgot his name. Um, the guy who did the wolf and all that stuff, little red riding hood and all those. Yeah, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's that. definitely based on one of those Flash Fleischer. Yeah, that's what I was trying Fleischer, to say. Yeah. Fleischer. Yep. Yeah. So like, in, in tech, so in that respect, it was like, yeah, she matched that. And if you notice, like, her 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 gravity is off, and that's what yeah. makes her cartoony, <laughs> right? Um, because she doesn't look like a cartoon outside of the big huge breasts. But what makes her cartoony is where when a normal woman would walk their boobs would bounce down her boobs bounce yeah. up yeah that's what I'm <laughs> like it's kind of a this. weird thing yeah <laughs> right. yeah because i remember saying that like the way she when she turns her boobs go this way when now normal women's would go this way and stuff so like that's yeah, how joey they says it. they defy gravity exactly yeah, they, yes. got they kept a superhero in the book anyway Don't worry. and some yeah. of the best jokes in the movie come from her and they're really well written you know what i yeah. mean like the nice booby trap like <laughs> yeah that's what, I was, that's what i was saying i'm just kind of like this character I like, or like I, when I, eddie's I, getting I, up and he just bumps him and he's like oh sorry you know, like, yeah, yeah. yeah well it's like he's caught with his pants down with her and she's like you know oh, what are you doing it's like, dabbling in watercolors eddie <laughs> It's so like I don't know. It's it's so innocent. Honestly, She's probably looking not. for a good place to stick a knife. <laughs> if, if people if people get freaked out over that kind of thing, I'm just like God. I mean, they must be like, how can they survive now? Like, what? I don't know. It, it, it's yeah. such an innocent type of thing with how it is. It seems like it could, it could be way worse. Is, is I guess <laughs> all I can think of. Like how much worse it can get. And uh, you know, I do I do? So, I it agree. Seems very that. restrained. I miss I miss great writing as well. And Brad Barth, I yes. don't think a movie like Roger Rabbit could be made today. And I don't know if you missed this earlier, but uh, Steven Spielberg is how it happened. That's how we got all yeah. these Warner and Disney yeah. characters together. We talked about that. Um, he threatened but, to yeah. pull out of uh, Amblin, pull Amblin out of uh, 
Warner Brothers Studios if they didn't allow him to use the Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. And then the deal was, this is even funnier, Warner Brothers is like, all right, fine, but here's the deal. Mickey and Bugs, Donald and Daffy, whoever your counterparts are for the rest of the movies, they have to have equal screen time. <laughs> mm-hmm. And not only that, they have to be the newer versions. They can't be the 1940s versions. That pissed them off. Well, so what happened was the guy, I can't remember the guy's name, but the head animator did it anyway. He's like, I, I don't give a fuck what they say. We're, we're doing these the way they're supposed to look. Because the Looney Tunes looked different back then. Yeah. So he animated a bunch of stuff with them the way they were supposed to look. And Warner Brothers also had a stipulation that they got to okay the stuff after it was done. So they sent over all the Looney Tunes stuff and at first they were upset, but then they were kind of, they were impressed by it and they brought him over to Warner brothers to work on, uh, animation for a while. And we had a little revival of the, uh, Looney Tunes and they got re reconfigured back to their older versions. Cause for a while there, they had been changed to this really cutesy kind of version that, um, Chuck Jones had kind of changed them into. Cause they did go through different changes over the years. And this is when they kind of went back to the original version and they stayed that version up until basically the last few years. Like that's what happened. It was kind of weird how that happened, but they are first, they were pissed about it. But then as they got watching the footage, they were like, this guy knows the Looney Tunes and it's good. And it looks good. Cause the animation they saw, like the, they saw like the, the, the Daffy duck scene, I think first they were kind of pissed. And then they saw the bugs, buddy, Mickey mouse. Scene, and they're like, all right, <laughs> this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> because that's where bugs really looks different yeah yeah but there you go rook how did, i hope you got some good conversation all that you got any final yeah, words brian's probably right because i think chuck jones was the one who was resistant to it to be honest yeah. with you because at the time i think he was the head of warner brothers animation uh because he also did the uh um the grinch stole christmas and a bunch of other specials and stuff too yeah, I think that about covers it. Other than, I guess I had one more question. Were with Christopher Lloyd with that character, or are they planning to have him be a different type of character, or be Christopher Lloyd at all, or is that a later decision? Because he said that he was working on Back to the Future, and uh, at the same time, I'm that, sure that, that, that Christopher the, Lloyd in it. I, I think know, Robert just fell in love with him when working on him, working on Back to the Future with him, probably. Okay, well, I don't I think mean, Judge Dredd. I don't think he's a. I'm trying to remember if he's even a character in the original book now. Okay, so I think so he I was might have been an original, original character original for the movie. Not. Yeah, I was wondering if he had like an original cartoon design, and then they decided not to do that and have it be Christopher Lloyd with the few cartoonish things at the end. It's been okay. a few years since I've read the book, and I can't remember if Judge Doom was even in the in, in the book. Tim Curry was considered. I can see that. Um, yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah. It was a way. Yeah, it was a way different character for for Christopher Lloyd, and I'm sure he wanted to do it just because of that, because mm -hmm. um, he was getting always stuck playing the stoner slash crazy psycho kind of guy, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this one could be a little more reserved and everybody else yeah. be crazy for once. <laughs> well, it's one of the only times he plays a villain outside of this. And well, he plays in the villain in years, food I fight. I'm going to say more recent <laughs> years he has, but like other than this, at this time, this movie and Dennis, yeah. the menace are the only two movies I can think of where he plays a bad guy in oh, until Star a little Trek later. 3. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah I forgot he played movie. the Klingon. Yeah. Klingon. <laughs> I have had enough of you. <laughs> Kirk, give me Genesis. What do you want people. with a progressive rock band from the 80s? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Phil <laughs> Collins <laughs> sucks. <laughs> yeah, that, that pretty much wraps up uh, my commentary with uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I really liked it. There you go. Really That's a great it. movie. It's good. Well, I there was one movie I didn't.